Good afternoon. How are you? I've just found out that they're going to be closing off the road near my surgery, but only overnight. Well, I'll say overnight from seven o'clock. So in case I get the irresistible urge to uh, go back to work and see a patient after seven o'clock, I'll have to explain. No possible. So, I hope you're well. Let me just get around this Honda. I think it must have like a 90cc engine in there or something. By the way, I know there's a squeak in the background. I do know that. That's the clutch. So what I've done is I've taken the fast road home and I'm going to do it. Having fixed the rattle in the back, I've now got a squeak on the clutch. So, short of putting it into the garage, I don't know what I'm going to have to squirt a bit of AL F50 on it or something and see if I can... Hopefully it's just the, uh, the hinge, you know. I fixed so much stuff though, over the weekend. I fixed the central heating. I replaced the uh, motorised uh, commander on the uh, three-way valve. The um, Reset the uh, thermostat on the boiler. Repaired my glasses. Fixed anything, man. Fixed everything. So anyway, I was going to tell you about this dental law thing I've got on the go at the moment. So, they're right. They don't, uh, you know, mistreat these lawyers. They don't write and say, look, can you send us the notes? Because um, we're thinking of suing you. They sent me a letter saying, uh, can you send me this patient's notes? It's in connection with a complaint she's got against a... Uh, another dentist, a completely unrelated dentist and so I'm like okay and they sent me the um, consent and everything so I'm like okay there's her consent and everything so I sent them the notes anyway it turns out they're lying which I mean basically that's what the law is all about is two competing sets of lies see which uh, which set of lies the judge finds most compelling. So, so anyway, I'm not really upset about that because uh, what I found out was that uh, my dentist now routinely will not release notes unless the patient um, requests them, you know. So the patient has to contact the surgery directly and then they'll release the notes to the patient. They don't allow um, the patient just to sign a form to allow dental law partnership to get the notes and, because what they're going on is a trawling expedition, it's a fishing expedition uh, they, there's no allegation or rather the allegation that you end up having to deal with is not, is not at all alleged by the patient at that point uh, dental law partnership tells the patient what, what to allege and draws up the letter for them and alleging it and everything You know, all the patient does is sign it so anyway, it turns out that um, they're alleging that I missed a... Uh, uh, what the patient alleged was that um, uh, she had a root treatment done, upper left six, that wouldn't settle down. And um, she described this as, um, on a scale of 0 to 10, you know, the pain scale of 0 to 10, where 10 is the worst pain she could possibly imagine. She started off saying it was a one and a half and then... Um, uh, raised it eventually to uh, two after I'd seen her two or three times um, you know and was saying all these things about you know I'm you know I still think you did a wonderful job it just hasn't settled down so my wife had a root treatment in an upper six it took two years to settle down so not not done by me I might add but uh, you know I had to put up with two years of um, this tooth doesn't feel right this tooth doesn't feel the same as all the others. I don't feel like chewing on this tooth. This tooth feels odd when I bite on it. Two years and then suddenly I sort of, I realized that she hadn't mentioned it for a month. And I said to her that, you know, you haven't moaned about that tooth for a month. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, I suppose it must have settled down. So anyway, I said to this woman, um, you know, you can either, um, Consider having it extracted if it's, but really, if it's only two out of ten, I mean, really, who would? 
or uh, nip over and see this other guy who works locally and uh, get a second opinion. So she went to see this other guy who gave her a second opinion who said that the uh, root filling is poking through the uh, platal canal. In other words, it had been overfilled. And that's true, my uh, uh, apex locator readings did show that the um, a, a reading on the on the platal canal that was sort of longer than the buccal ones, but not you know. But that's not at all totally unusual. You know, I mean, you can get uh, platal canals that are longer than buccal roots. So at the time, obviously, didn't didn't make think anything of it. Anyway, it turns out so it was overfilled platal canal. Now, in my experience, that is not really an issue. You know, it's not something to. Uh, alleged negligence over uh, and it's certainly not anything that would cause a long-standing problem with pain or anything overfilling a root is I wouldn't say it's a it's not no, it's not necessarily common but it's certainly not unheard of anyway uh, the problem is this patient is a um, conspiracy theorist she uh, spent most of her appointment telling me how amalgam is a poison and that's why she didn't like amalgam fillings and fluoride is a poison uh, because it's just a poison and uh, it shouldn't you know, be added to water or toothpaste or anything and so of course when, when the second dentist told her that the discomfort she was experiencing was because we'd fucked up the root filling she was primed to believe that because she is primed to believe that there is a conspiracy behind absolutely everything. Every problem in her life is caused by uh, conspiracy. And the, my, the conspiracy then, I, I then became part of her conspiracy that I uh, overfilled the route and uh, bear in mind I'd taken an x-ray. I had taken a post-operative x-ray which I thought included the tip of the platal root and probably did include the tip of the platal root but what it didn't include was that part of the root filling that, that actually went through the platal root that must have been off the edge of the x-ray so um, so my x-ray actually looked fine uh, it looked good, like a good root filling but um, you know he'd taken another x-ray from a different angle which showed that the uh, the, the platal canal was overfilled, which is fine. So then, um, Dental Law Partnership then uh, sent me a letter alleging negligence on the um, basis that I, at her uh, examination prior to the root filling, I had failed to spot the fact that this tooth had caries, um, and so which actually wasn't one of her allegations at all. And it certainly wasn't anything that she mentioned to me, and certainly nothing that she'd ever brought up in a in a complaint. You know, all this. If you, if you hear all this, you know, oh, don't worry about it getting escalated because the in the first instance the patient must go through the practice with any complaints that they've got. I mean, that's a load of BS. Um, you know, if, if you're lucky enough to hear from the patient. Uh, then it's almost certainly it won't be about anything that ends up being the final complaint and it's possible you could just not hear from the patient at all as in the case of uh, a woman who's where I extracted her wisdom tooth and then alleged that she'd been through a lot of pain and suffering uh, because the, the tooth was covered in bone whereas in fact on the OPG that was just the external oblique ridge and the tooth was in fact not covered with bone at all. In fact, I've never in my entire career ever extracted a tooth that was covered with bone. As far as I'm concerned, if a tooth covered with bone, it can stay where it is and almost never, you know, and never gives any trouble. But uh, anyway, thank you, Ashley Lupin, thank you. Thank you for that, that diagnosis, that misdiagnosis of that OPG all that time ago in 1982 or wherever it was. 
But um, anyway, so uh, so I've got this allegation that uh, I missed the fact that this tooth was decayed uh, for a few months prior to it needing root filling, and then and then there's a bunch of other stuff tacked on, such as uh, uh, that I failed to make a note of what irrigant I used in carrying out the root filling. So you really don't know, you know, what to make of this because I do know for a fact that the, the way this works is that they they throw as much uh, shit as they can in the hope that some of it will stick. And it's not a practice that is confined to dental law partnership. It's it's the GDC's policy as well. If you're ever up before the GDC, they'll they'll hit you with 24 indictments, uh, hoping knowing that 22 of them are absolute crap but they might convince uh, they might convince a bunch of gullible dentists and lay people that at least two of them aren't crap and therefore they'll get you one way or the other so I'm sort of I'm over it now you know I mean case there are there are what I don't what I don't quite understand is that uh, you know, our, our disclaimer, which says that success is not guaranteed, applies equally to the checkups. I'm not saying that I am perfect and I do perfect checkups. My examination, diagnosis, and planning, I would say, is streets ahead of most dentists. But it doesn't mean I'm perfect. I mean, I'm, I am capable of missing a filling, uh, probably less than the average dentist, but some decay. But, you know, it's not inconceivable that I, it could happen to me, and possibly on this case it did. So, I personally, I think she spent so much of the appointment telling me uh, how evil fluoride is, that um, probably we didn't uh, spend as much time looking at her x-rays as we should have done. But, we, we, did, uh, we did review them, and so, and we made her know that we'd reviewed them, but, it wasn't part of the, what, the, what we recorded in the review. So there you go. So, so you're allowed to, um, you know, it's not negligence if your crown is slightly the wrong shade, or it's not negligence if you leave a filling high on the buyer. But apparently, uh, it is um, alleged negligence if uh, you fail to uh, discover on X-ray some decay which. You, you later then correctly treat, but could have treated sooner, uh, and, and it was unrelated to the patient's complaint, which is that the root root filling won't settle down. Now she's um, unfortunately she went through a similar episode with the upper right six, where she had a root filling done and it wasn't successful, and so she ended up having the tooth extracted, and so I think she's reliving that. Uh, reliving things, that episode and doing things on the left hand side on the way perhaps that she wishes that she, she'd done them on the right. But um, her claim includes uh, uh, extraction of the six, uh, sinus lift, uh, bone uh, transplant and implants on a regular basis for the rest of her life comes to about eight grand I think so literally I mean not worth a barrister getting out of bed over to be quiet and so I'd imagine it's going to be settled on a no fault basis but I don't know but I'll let you know I don't know you know well, I don't those these things even if it's settled on a no fault basis it doesn't mean it has no effect on anything you know I mean, um, I'm going to have to think about putting in a disclaimer in my quote that basically says that uh, all exams are done on a best effort basis and we can't guarantee that we may not miss something, you know. And that's routinely done like for things like implants and stuff like that. Um, but um, never, as far as I know, has it been done for checkups. So we may be pioneering from that point of view. Um,
But then uh, uh, the other thing, of course, you know, it just makes you more wary. <laughs> the more and more trouble you have, the more and more wary you get about uh, taking on patients. You know, I'm getting to the point now where I probably wouldn't take on a patient if they started coming in and trying to micromanage their treatment and uh, I'm just going to see if they're nicking my wall now. No. That's good. You know, if a patient came in and started trying to micromanage their treatment and telling me about how fluoride's poison and uh, mercury is a poison and everything, then, then, you know, I would be, I'd be more inclined now just to say, look, I'm sorry, you, you need a different, you need a mercury-free dentist, you know. Well, no, we don't do mercury fillings, but we're not mercury-free. I got nothing against mercury. Bloody excellent filling material. Used to great effect by the community dental service, I'll tell you. Right, okay, so that's it, in case you're curious, and uh, what I'll, if there's any sort of uh, developments, I'll let you know. But I'm rather hoping, it's been referred to a, a legal firm, so they can defend me. You have, you have a sort of a short chat with a, someone who's a dental advisor, who's dentally qualified, and then they, they have a chat with you about you know what your thoughts are on the case, and then they send it off to the lawyer. And then the lawyer, the lawyer I don't know, I'm just anticipating that they'll just ring me up and say, look, we'll, we'll make an offer. What do you think about making an offer on a no-fault basis? And I'll say, I'll say yes, and that'll be it. Anyway, nice to talk to you. All the best. Bye.